they got to know me, they got to like me, and they got to trust me. Well, mm-hmm. you got, it takes a lot for people to know you, right? To get to know who you are. I use myself as an example, not because I'm so fabulous, but just an example. I worked in TV. I was on a game show called Deal or No Deal. I was in tons of fitness magazines. I was in People Magazine's 100 Most Beautiful People in the World. Okay. So I use as an example, why don't you know me? Why don't you know me? I have been everywhere. I've been on TV. I've been in magazines. The point is, is that it, it doesn't matter. I have to like, there's so much going on in the world all at one time that it like, you have to get really loud in order to get the attention. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So I've done all these things. Nobody knows who I am. I am not special. (laughs) You know, my point being is that when you go on social media, I will tell this, it's not about posting every day. It's not about, I want to have messages that sit on my social media that when I meet someone, I go to an event because I love events, people connection, right? Well, guess what? They're going to go and look you up. They're going Mm -hmm. to Google you. They're going to look on social media, whether you want to be on social media or not, they're going to search for you there. So what are they going to see when they get there? If you want to make more sales without the pressure to post on social media, I made this podcast specifically for you. I'm Leslie Stevens, and this is the Not an Influencer, an Impact Maker podcast, where we talk about other organic marketing strategies to bring more clients into your online business and the stories of the incredible entrepreneurs who are using these strategies in their businesses every day to create success. You do not have to be an influencer to be an impact maker and build a successful online business. I am just so excited for this episode. I cannot wait for you to hear all the incredible things that Julie has to share with us. Can you tell us a little bit about you and what you do? Hi, Leslie. I am so excited to be here. I have been looking forward to this all week. And so my name is Julie Gracie, and I am a business and marketing coach. My favorite clients are women who are trying to start their businesses and grow. I've coached many clients. um, And, you know, my history is I've done a lot of different things. So I've had a lot of different experiences, and I love being able to take all of those experiences into my clients and serve them. So, uh, I'm so excited to be here and speak with you. Oh, amazing. So how did you even get started doing this? Even though you've done so many different things, how did you land where you are right now? You know, you, you think you're going down a path and you don't know where that path is leading. And so when you can just let go and let it lead you where it's going to end up, you you would surprise yourself. So you know, just growing up on a farm in the middle of the Midwest, you know, very humble beginnings and wanting to dream big and model. And I figured out a way to get to Los Angeles and start working in TV and modeling. And then I went overseas and I walked runways in Milan. I did all kinds of fun and crazy things. Then to come back and start a family again, continue to work in TV shows like deal or no deal. Uh, and which is the famous one, but then transitioning to selling real estate and flipping houses. And so it's just, you never know where all of these things are going to take you, but just trusting that you're there for a reason and really lean into wherever you are in life. And so taking all of this together, I've always coached people not realizing it. I've always been like that positive energy as, um, some people call me the human red bull. Um, you know, so, and it's funny because my very best friend is very introverted, very quiet. And it's just, I always end up matching up with those people in my life because I tend to see so many positive things inside of them that they're hiding inside and I can see it. And so it's like, I really want to pull it out of them. And so that's what I get into coaching women. And I, that's what I love doing is helping take these gifts that every single woman has inside of them and helping them bring them out uh, to better their lives. Oh, that's incredible. And obviously you have been just absolutely tenacious from day one, making all of those things happen for yourself in all of these different phases of life and really trusting yourself to evolve through that 
into all of these different professions and jobs. So do you feel like you were just born with that kind of trust in yourself to be like, okay, I know I'm going in the right direction, even though I don't know exactly where it's going to lead? Or do you feel like that's a skill that you kind of developed as you went on and as life kind of happened? That is an excellent question. I will tell you, I 100% was not born with an <laughs> iota of confidence, but I, I tell you, it was one thing in my life that I didn't realize until I got older that not everyone had. Sometimes mm -hmm. you, your, your normal is not everyone else's. So I had one person in my life and that was my mother who was my very first mentor, the positive, uh, light in my life. Anytime I doubted myself, questioned myself, I was so blessed to have that person that was always there. And it started with one question. And I use that question today with my clients. And so when I would say, maybe I'm thinking about doing something or I'm scared to do something, she would always ask me one question. Well, what if you did? Mm -hmm. And people say, what if, what if this? No, what if you did? Okay, mom. I kind of want to take off to LA and go model and travel the world. There was never of like, that's a crazy idea. It was a, well, what if you did? Mm -hmm. Okay. What, what would you need to do? What would you need to learn? Where would you live? And literally make it, make me write it down. So she, at the time she had probably no idea what she was doing for me, but <laughs> taking something that's a dream, an idea, an emotion and rationalizing it. And mm -hmm. what that does is our brains are amazing, right? They have this, they can go with all these great things we can do. But a lot of times when we get an idea, they also can go the other way where they go to the negative. Well, I could do, oh, well, you could fail. This could happen. All of the negative things. And if you really think about our DNA, not to go too deep, it's the reason that happens is, is to protect us because mm -hmm. anything new could be a threat to our lives, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's not the modern day and age now. We can go and try things and fail and still be living just fine. So the what if you did question can apply to basically anything. And what if I did? Here are the positives. Write them down. And what if I did? What are the negatives? What scares me? Well, write them down. And then what we do is we go back to those perceived negatives um, and we literally, okay, if I jumped, if I tried to ride a bike, I could fall off. Mm -hmm. Well, what if you did? And then, okay, well, what's the negative? Well, I could scrape my knee. Well, I could crack my head open. Well, what if I wore a helmet? Okay, well, I probably would be okay. Well, let's cross that off. Well, I might scrape my knee. Okay, and you literally can go through the negatives and rationalize and cross them off to anything that's left is either positive or anything that is negative. You proved to yourself, well, I could handle that. Mm -hmm. And so this is a process I've used for everything. Like, what if I sell everything I own and just book a one-way flight to Europe to go try to model in Milan? What does that look like? <laughs> like, people are like, how did you just do that? I'm like, because I did the exercise. Well, I wrote it down. <laughs> what if I did? What if I did? Okay, well, wow, what an experience that would be. You, you, this is how I've done everything. So it's not, it eliminates the fear because, well, I, what if I go over there? What if I get lost? What if I don't model at all? What if they're like, Hey, American, get back to the States. We don't like you here. You know, whatever it is, you know, but I know that, okay, I could just go to the airport and book a flight and come home. Mm -hmm. So it just takes that fear out of trying new things. And I'm telling you for someone that has done a lot of things in, in a lot of different areas, this question would be something I would sit on to anyone that's listening, that they're thinking of doing something but they're not sure and they're a little scared, get it out of your head and write it down with this question at the top. What if you did? Mm -hmm. That's such a great question. That seems so simple, but when you put it in that context, it's incredibly powerful because like you mentioned, we want to go to the negative very quickly, especially when it's something new because our brains are like, oh, I got to protect you. Even if it's something better, our brain wants to keep us where we are because it knows exactly what to expect. So you can retrain the way you think. And I love that your mom was the one to ask you this question and ingrain it in you so early. That's a way of thinking I had to learn to develop over the years was 
I would always think, what's the worst thing that's like, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? And I would immediately think of all of the negative things that were going to happen if I took a risk. And that would hold me back. I would take a lot of time to think about it, be like, oh, it's probably not worth the risk. And then I became somebody who would take the risks. And people were like, how did you start doing that? And I was like, well, I stopped asking what are the worst things that are going to happen? What are the best things that could happen? Absolutely. You took that what if you did, probably starting your podcast. Of mm-hmm. <laughs> How long did you think about that before you actually did it? Oh, I can tell you, not very long. Over oh, time. Great. Right. <laughs> Over time, though, I feel like it enables you to make quicker decisions. Mm-hmm. So when you start to get into that mindset of not always thinking about the negative, but thinking, okay, what's the best thing that could happen? Or what if I did? How can I make a plan? What would it look like? Those things enable you to take action. And the more you get used to doing it, the more confidence you then have to go out there and make those things happen. So it's not something that you need to be used to doing right now. If you feel like you're in the mindset of like, oh, I want to start a business or, oh, I want to go out there and get clients. But what if I hear no? What if nobody likes me? What if people make fun of me? All of those Mm -hmm. real thoughts and feelings that come up when you get started as an entrepreneur, you can start to retrain the way that you think about it. So When you do put yourself out there or when you tell somebody close to you and your family that you're starting a business, the more that you do it, the easier it will get because you're like, oh, what if they are like, why would you do that? You're crazy. But also, Mm -hmm. what if they were like, that's incredible. How can I help you? And oh, maybe I can refer you to this person because they could use what you do. And it's all in that powerful like reframe. And I love that you take it a step further and you make a plan. So when you work with people who are just getting started, how do you really support them in kind of building that momentum into taking action? Yeah, absolutely. So when you're first starting out in anything, again, it's new. And so it can be scary. Uh, You just have to think in the past, have you done something new? What was something that was scary to you before? That was new. You took forever maybe to think about it and do it. And maybe you failed and you tried again and you succeeded. So proof. I like to start Mm -hmm. with proof because they're just proving to themselves. Can you try something new and succeed? Yes, you can. You know, have you done something hard before and succeeded? I use the same exercise. I have two teenage daughters. I use the same exercise with them. And I use the example of my, uh, my kindergartner when she was in kindergarten. She came to me crying and I thought, okay, somewhere on her body is a cut or a bruise or something just happened. And she came to me that she was like, mom, I cannot go to first grade. And I said, well, okay. And of course, I'm trying not to laugh at this point. (laughs) Tell me why you cannot go to first grade. She goes, because you have to learn to read in first grade and reading is so hard. And, you know, that for her was a true emotion of like fear And there's something very hard in front of me. And I don't think I can do this. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, well, and I literally use that question. Okay, well, what if you did go to first grade? What if, what would we need to prepare to try to make it easier? Okay, well, you know, you need to know your letters. And like literally breaking it down that simple, make sure you know your letters. Let's try to learn these words. These are the words they say you're going to have to, you know, know when you're reading in first grade. Why don't we practice those? Because that'll make it easier, right? It literally is that simple to breaking it down of what you need to do. Mm -hmm. I use the same tactics for someone that's like, I think I want to do this business. Okay. Well, let's look at what you do know now and what skills do you need to learn to become that next version of you? Because anyone knows that started a business, starting a business is becoming someone different than you are right now. And so learning new skills learning new ways to cope with issues and deal with problems. And so really it's the basics. People try to overcomplicate things. I have to, I'm going to have a business. I need to have all of these tools and tricks and learn this algorithm and timing of social media. No, it goes back to really keeping it simple. That is probably the motto of my whole teaching is simplifying things, keeping them simple. What do you need to learn? 
what do you need to do right now? And what do you need to learn? Because Mm -hmm. I am proof. Any of us can learn anything. I am raised by two parents that never even graduated high school. I was raised in a very humble area. Uh, I, I do not have a college degree, but I learned to teach myself the things I need to learn. Like, what don't I know? And then mm-hmm. go and learn it. Um, I don't know how to do marketing. Well, YouTube is your best uh, <laughs> teacher. Let me tell you. Um, I have learned so much, but it used to be you didn't have enough information. I'm you know, from a generation where the internet actually happened while I was still alive. Um, <laughs> you couldn't find the information right now. It's the opposite. We are so overloaded with information that like it gives you anxiety. You try to search for one thing and you get 10, 100,000 results. You know, what's the correct thing to learn from? And so going back to your question of when someone's first starting out is realizing where your strengths are. Mm-hmm. And then realizing the direction that you want to go between that gap, what do you need to learn? Um, whether it's business, whether it's personal, a lot of it is mindset, um, mm-hmm. thinking about things. But then the biggest one that I think is skipped is what they need to unlearn. Yeah. The unlearning is a huge part. And I'm a testament to that as well. I used to think that, you know, taking deep breaths and calming was just the most ridiculous thing. Like, okay, I'm gonna take some deep breaths and feel better. This is, I was so cynical of it. So many things. And then sometimes if you will just drink the Kool-Aid, you're like, oh, actually doing some deep breaths and rolling my shoulders. This actually does make me feel better. And then you're like, oh, okay, well maybe I don't know everything. Maybe what I knew I need to unlearn. So I still unlearn things to this day as an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. I definitely think you're constantly learning and unlearning things on a (laughs) daily basis. But you said something really, like powerful, that you, like you get to decide what you need to learn to take your next step, and do all of the things that you want to do. Like, there are so many opportunities out there. There's even too much information out there. And I completely agree with that. And it's difficult to kind of sort through what's going to work and what's not going to work and what things you need to actually implement and what things you don't need to implement and kind of making those decisions. But I think that's a great testament to getting somebody there to support you and guide you in the right direction. Now, when people are getting started and they are in that overwhelming period of like, oh my gosh, there's so much information out there and I want to take it all in and I want to do all of that. What do you feel like is the biggest and most important factor when it comes to actually getting paying clients? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, Because it's you just touched on one thing about there's so much to learn and so much to do. And if you look at all of it at one time, you will feel overwhelmed. So if you've done this already and you're like, the anxiety builds, it's too much, you're overwhelmed because you're trying to do too much at one time, too Mm -hmm. much at one time. And so again, we go through a schedule of breaking it down. Okay. You need to understand how to do this part of your business. Okay. So this week we're going to have a coaching call. We're going to go through it. And then this next week, you're going to work on that one thing. And then lay out a plan, okay, over the next 90 days, by the time we, from here to 90 days, you are going to know all of these things that you need in order to take the next big step of what you're doing. When you do it that way, it, oh, the pressure is off. I know I have to learn 60 things, but this week I have to learn this one thing and Mm -hmm. just being patient because I know at the end of those 90 days, I'm going to know them all. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes to getting your first sales, this goes into, again, skills, skills. Okay. What does that look like? And once I get kind of the, the habits down for my clients, we go into whatever they're trying to sell and it goes into your branding. Some people, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to maybe if they have social media or what to put out there, it has to go back to your branding because once you're strong in your branding of who are you? Why are you doing what you're doing? You, you, you started a business to solve a problem. So mm-hmm. I always have to switch that mindset of, I don't want too many problems. 
well, I hear this from that. I don't want problems. That's, that is becoming an entrepreneur. You are solving <laughs> problems. <laughs> so now what you want is you want better problems. I don't want the problem of I have one solid client paying me and they, they decide they want to end the contract and I don't have any more money and now I'm scared. That mm -hmm. is a problem you don't want to have. You want to have the problem that you have people asking you to work with you, but you have to turn them away or put them on a wait list because you don't have the time. That's the problem you want to have. Mm -hmm. And so you're never going to be without problems. So I think, again, it's going back to mindset of, okay, I do want problems, but I want big problems. I want the good problems of I have three checks sitting in my mailbox that I haven't had time to go deposit because I'm too busy working in with my clients. Mm -hmm. You know, those are the problems you want to have. And so I think that starts with mindset of what are my expectations, what I'm doing. And then, yeah, it definitely goes into being strong and what your message is, uh, mm -hmm. speaking the language. Oh, this is a huge one. Speaking the language of your client. I just worked with a spa owner and I said, well, tell me what you do. She goes, well, I help women with their collagen and their, you know, hyperpigmentation. And I was like, oh, whoop, stop there. When I look in the mirror in the night, I don't say, man, I really wish I had help with my hyperpigmentation and my collagen and my skin. What do I mm -hmm. say? I look tired. My skin looks dull. I just, I feel like I look old. Mm -hmm. So use that language, speak my language. So when you're doing your marketing of, do you, you know, do you feel like when you look in the mirror, you just look tired? And I'm going to hear that message. I'm going to be like, yes, that's me. Yes, I do. <laughs> Tell me more. And mm -hmm. then it's like, we have that solution for you. We do X, Y, and Z. It's going to make your skin feel refreshed. When you look in the mirror, it's going to be, you know, hydrated. The, uh, sign me up. Here's my credit card. So mm -hmm. some of it are small tweaks. I do this over and over of it because we get so into our industry, our technical talk, but speaking their language. And that's a big tip of once you do that, it becomes very easy to communicate with the person you're trying to, to sell your product to. Yeah. Sometimes we get so deep in our own business. It's really hard to see it from an outside perspective. And you really do need to talk like your ideal client talks, learn the way that they speak about themselves and the problem that they have so that you can create that connection with them. And that's exactly what you're talking about is developing a connection with them. And one of the things that I always like to think about when I feel like I'm getting too deep in my business and I'm like getting into all of the jargon and I'm like, nobody's going to understand what I'm thinking about. I'm like, I have to flip the script and think about it from the other person's perspective and really get out of the mindset of, okay, what am I doing? And more of how can I be of service to them? And getting out of that place of me being the center to the client being the center. Because like you mentioned, we start a business to solve a problem. And it's to solve somebody else's problem. But a lot of the entrepreneurial industry and a lot of what we see, it's making the entrepreneur the center of attention. And a lot of what I do is shifting it back to making things client centered and remembering that we are in the business of supporting people, whether that's through a service or a product, but we are in the people business and we have to be able to communicate with people. And that's how you get your paying clients. Absolutely. And this is a big problem that uh, I think when it comes down to social media, it's because people don't like it because it's like, it's about you putting yourself out there. You, it can be very vulnerable. It's like you're ripping the doors open um, and it doesn't have to be that way. There are, you know, social media is a tool. And I teach this that, again, a mindset about that of it's a tool to reach people that need you. Mm -hmm. And again, just like you said, this isn't about you. So when I get, you know, clients that are like, I don't know how to talk on camera and I'm really uncomfortable. We walk through that and I'm like, stop thinking about what your hair looks like, what your face looks like. We're not going to post this, what we're going to record right now. We are not posting. So practice mm -hmm. is a huge part of what I teach my clients. You're going to put a camera up there 
And I want you to think about that client that you're trying to serve. Maybe you serve a single mother who's had abuse in her life in the past and you, you know about that and you know her pain deep in your soul. Look in the camera and what can you do and say to inspire that person? What can you do? What does she need to hear from you right now? You know, what, what can you provide for her to help her? She needs help from someone. She's desperately seeking for help. You can help her. And so immediately they're not thinking about themselves or what they're saying, or, or they're talking to that client and you, and not just in social media, but in, in, in your blog posts, in your communication, one-on-one, -on -one, you know, listening more than talking. What are, mm -hmm. what am I hearing that they're, they're needing picking up on those things, um, and a lot of women, especially, are very uh, intuitive and understanding. And we, you know, tend to put more emotion in the thing. And that's a good thing. Emotion is a good thing in business. Business can be very dry and cut in numbers. <laughs> but I tell this to my clients. People are not coming to your business to buy your product. They are coming to buy from you. Mm -hmm. They're buying you, the service you provide, what you're doing. Not, not because your hair looks great and you have really the, you know, Chanel number five lipstick, whatever it is, they're <laughs> buying from you. It's the connection to you is the trust to you. So building trust, you cannot mm -hmm. make a sale unless someone trusts you. And there's just three ways. First, they have to know you mm -hmm. then they have to like you and then they have to trust you. And once they trust you, they'll buy from you. And mm -hmm. it's, it's very simple. We overcomplicate it as we do all things. <laughs> But going to them, and so my years working as a concierge in a hotel, I worked uh, as a concierge in a hotel at the Lowe's in Santa Monica. It was very fabulous, but it was the best job. All my job was to do was to help people. Like if they had a complaint about their room, that was the front desk. Okay, go talk mm -hmm. to them. I was the fun when I got to book their, uh, let's see, they need a car service to, and they need tickets to um, a concert. They want a really nice reservation. Men would come up and I want, it's my wife's anniversary. I want to take it somewhere. And I would plan that for them. And oh gosh, that job was meant for me. I probably, to this day, I could just go get a concierge job and just rock it. I love that <laughs> job. But the core of it was a few different things. It's about service. Mm -hmm. It's about service for them. And, you know, thinking about how best can I serve them and anticipating what they need and knowing that they're going to come to you with one question, thinking they know what they want, but really they need something else. Mm -hmm. And so in business coming to, they'll say, I need this. You know, I, need, I just had this happen. I had a client that said, I need help with my branding. Okay, we'll start there. That's the best place to start. Well, sitting down with her, her branding was on point. She was killing it in brand. I'm like, you, you don't need any of this. And then we got to the point real quick of she needed help with sales. She had built mm -hmm. this great business because she's a bit of an introvert, super talented in what she does, great branding, great marketing in place. And then it's almost like just sitting back and, okay, I'm open and I'm ready for anybody that wants to come and use my service, right? Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people here can relate to that of like, okay, I, but I have a really great product. I said, baby, you've got to ask for the sale. Mm -hmm. And how do we get you to do that in a way that's comfortable to you? That doesn't mm -hmm. feel like you're like, so you want to work with me? <laughs> <laughs> and so verbiage of how to do that, how do you ask comfortably? And I'll share this here. She has a photography business. And so I said, when you go to a client, I said, when you first met me, you didn't pitch me. You didn't say, you didn't try to sell me anything. Why not? She's like, oh, um, uh, you know, and then I said, okay, well, there, that's how we know you need help with sales. And sales mm -hmm. is not this dirty word is replace sales with service. How could you serve me? And so mm -hmm. we worked on some wording for her to be able to go to an event and say, when you meet someone, you're talking with them and you can just say, Hey, do you have any projects coming up that you might need some photos for? I said, does that sound comfortable to you? And she goes, yeah, actually it does. I said, it's not aggressive. It's not your style. But do you think that that would be a way to be able to ask? And that's making the connection of saying, this is what I do. Do you have any projects coming up where you need to, you know, have some photos done? If you do, here's, I would, you know, I'd love to work. And maybe that gives them the opportunity to say, oh, well, you know what? Actually, I do have this thing coming up 
and making a, I call it a soft sale because that's mm -hmm. kind of her personality. So being able to ask the right questions comes off very authentically and not that salesy vibe that makes you uncomfortable. Oh, that is so powerful. Swapping out sales for service, that simple reframe can change everything for so many people. And that's another thing that I love about being an entrepreneur is there are so many different ways you can be creative with the way that you approach selling in a way that's authentic to you, finding the right verbiage, feeling like you're inviting somebody to an opportunity where you can really support them. Or, hey, if you like the direct sale and it works for you, like that's awesome for you as well. Just finding let's call it a flavor, finding the flavor that is the best one for you and will help you create results. Because I used to have the same resistance to sale because I started out as a health coach and I didn't want to offend people by saying like, hey, I could support you with your nutrition and help you lose weight because that felt very aggressive for me. And I didn't want people to be offended and think that they needed to lose weight or they needed to change their life. I knew that they had to be the ones to be ready to change their lives. But that held me back from even inviting people in that wanted to be helped because I just hid myself back because I didn't know the right way to invite people in. I didn't know the right way to communicate with them. Mm -hmm. I was so hesitant to not offend people that I stood in my own way where I could have been out there communicating my message, supporting people, inviting people in to transform their habits, to feel better, to have more energy to play with their kids, to do more of the things that they love. But I wasn't out there. I wasn't selling it. I wasn't being of service where I could be of service. And those were opportunities that I then had to realize, okay, Leslie, you've got to approach this in a different way. You've got to learn the skills to fill that gap, to be able to do what you do. And honestly, that's why I love marketing so much now, because I have seen the power of so many people who have incredible services, great branding, marketing things in place, but just aren't making those sales. And when they're able to communicate it in that way that matches with them, they create an incredible impact on this world. And I loved that being of service is really at the forefront of all of those things. Absolutely. And so in what you were saying right there, of course, my coach come, my coaching brain clicks on it. <laughs> like I help people lose weight and feel good when someone says, oh yeah, I really would like to lose 20 pounds. Of, again, it's the questions of in that moment of saying, if you lost 20 pounds, what would that look like for you? How mm -hmm. do you think you would feel? You know, asking them, let them envision that and say, oh, wow, if I lost 20 pounds. I'd quit walking into my closet and trying to pull on jeans and talking down to myself every time I can't do them up. And I wouldn't hide myself when I go on vacation with my kids. I actually probably would put a swimsuit on and jump in the pool with them and, you know, and then asking you know, well, what if you did, you know, mm -hmm. what if you did, what if you did jump in the pool with your kids? How would you think that would affect them? And getting yeah. down to that core. So it's those questions you ask. So you see, I wouldn't be selling them. I am asking them questions to serve them mm -hmm. and saying, it's not about just losing 20 pounds and I feel better it literally will affect every area of your life. It'll affect your relationships. You'll have your energy back. What would it be like at the end of the day when you're working and you come home and your kids are there and they're like, mom, can you go do this? And you're just, I know those days, you're just so exhausted mentally, physically. You just say, not today, buddy. Mm -hmm. But instead you said, absolutely, let's go do it. And you made those core memories. It, it may just be 20 pounds to you but it's going to affect every area of your life in a ripple effect for years to come. And so do you see how I'm doing? I get him coaching it, but it's just, do you see how when you get into that? So then like someone like you, you're not just helping them lose 20 pounds. You are affecting their children's lives. You are affecting, you know, every part. When you get up in the morning and you have that energy, 
you're going to pick up the phone and make the sale. You're going to do the fun things with the kids. You're going to, you know, enjoy your spouse or go on a date night. And, and it affects everything because we are limited in our day and our energy, you know, all of us are. And so, uh, but it's like that with every business of, I'm not just, okay, let me coach you and help you make more money. That's not, Mm -hmm. that's not what I do. It's let me help you get your mindset right. So you can not only affect your life, but the other lives that you're trying to help, you know, uh, it's not about you. (laughs) It flows Mm -hmm. through you. (laughs) And that's to remember. So all these experiences I've had, everything that I've learned, I mean, it's not for me. I could just sit at home and not coach women, just be a stay at home mom, you know, be with my husband. But oh, what a shame. What a shame that would be for all the lessons I've learned. Everything that I know when I know what I have inside of me could help so many women. Like, it's almost like shame on me for staying at home and not sharing that. And so there are women out there that need that guidance. They need to learn these skills like we're talking about right now. And just like you, Leslie, if you didn't have the courage to create the podcast and come on here and bring these women on and bring these messages out to the world, how many people would be missing out on that? And Mm -hmm. so again, thinking about your marketing and business, it's, it's not us. It's through us for other people. It takes the pressure off of us. We don't have to be perfect. God, if we were perfect, we couldn't teach any of these lessons, could we? (laughs) No, not at all. (laughs) I love that you mentioned that though, because one of the best pieces of advice I have ever gotten when it comes to marketing is speak like you're speaking to one person Mm -hmm. and it will connect with many. And that is exactly why I started my platform. Not only because I personally struggled with social media marketing, like just felt like an uphill battle for me, unnatural, all of these things. And I found a way that worked best for me and I found other avenues to create success. But I had friends, very close friends, who I were, I was watching them go through the same struggle. I knew they were incredible entrepreneurs. They had amazing services, could create incredible life changing transformations, and they felt like failures because they didn't post every single day or they didn't know what was going on with the algorithm or they didn't want to dance to that reel. And I went out with the intention of each time I put something out into the world. I was speaking to one of them and that enabled me to not only put myself out there in a message that not a ton of people talk about. And sometimes I would hesitate, but remember I was talking to that one person who needed to hear this message, who maybe needed that perspective shift or just that weight off their shoulders that there's another way, or there's a different way to do things, or you can open up your mindset to more possibilities. But it was in speaking to one person that I was able to connect with so many other people who had those same barriers, who had those same problems, who really were experiencing those struggles and didn't even understand that they were in it in that moment. But it was speaking directly to someone that I could be of service to. Absolutely. And you were able to speak their language because you had that. I'm speaking to this one person. I do the same thing when I talk. I'm talking to, when I post anything on social media, it's to that person. Mm -hmm. And I don't know who that person is. Um, I will get random messages from a random person that would just be like, I really needed to hear that today. And when you Mm -hmm. get those messages, now granted, you're going to get other messages that are not as pleasant. (laughs) I'll talk about that if you'd like, because I know how to handle that so easy. Um, So, but it is, is that there are people out there that need what you have. And I, I think that something that just deep inside pains me is that like we talked about so many women have so much to offer, so much Mm -hmm. to offer. You're, You're brilliant. You're smart. You're kind. You're you really are a leader in hiding it. And that's okay. So not everybody has to come take their gifts out in the same way. So you don't have to say, okay, I'm going to post my whole life on social media. And that's the only way I'm going to be successful. That is such a lie. And we're just going to, I love that you teach it. That it, We're going to shut that down right now. Absolutely <laughs> not. Mm-hmm. Absolutely not. 
I will tell you something. I teach social media. I've been a social media manager. I have decent platforms. I do not care for social media. I really don't. I really wouldn't be on there if I, I don't know, hit the jackpot and I just won <laughs> billions of dollars. I probably wouldn't be on there. I'd be with my people. But when I look <laughs> at social media, I know that's where people are in this day and age. And that's how I can reach people. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, I t obviously teach ways that to, to do it without losing your mind and without it becoming a whole second job. But a another example is because I kept putting myself out there when I meet people, you know, remember it's the, they got to know me, they got to like me and they got to trust me. Well, mm -hmm. you got, it takes a lot for people to know you, right. To get to know who you are. I use myself as an example, not cause I'm so fabulous, but just an example. I worked in TV. I was on a game show called Deal or No Deal. I was in tons of fitness magazines. I was in People Magazine's 100 Most Beautiful People in the World. Okay. So I use as an example, why don't you know me? Why don't you know me? I have been everywhere. I've been on TV. I've been in magazines. The point is, is that it, it doesn't matter. I have to like, there's so much going on in the world all at one time that it like you have to get really loud in order to get the attention. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So I've done all these things. Nobody knows who I am. I am not special. <laughs> you know, my point being is that when you go on social media, I will tell this, it's not about posting every day. It's not about, I want to have messages that sit on my social media that when I meet someone, I go to an event because I love events, people connection, right? Well, guess what? They're going to go and look you up. They're going mm -hmm. to Google you. They're going to look on social media. Whether you want to be on social media or not, they're going to search for you there. So what are they going to see when they get there? Mm -hmm. I do not show my whole personal life. That's my personal life. My husband despises social media. <laughs> you will, you might see him in like one random photo. Um, <laughs> and I respect that. I don't put my children all over it. Like everybody has their what they want to do. But the point being is that when someone can go to my social media and I have my message on there, it's kind of like a resume speaking for me. I have some videos I've talked on. I have some things that I speak about, but do I feel pressure to post something every day? Absolutely not. What time of day? I will tell you right now, it does not matter. We don't, my clients do really well and we don't worry about algorithms, times of day. We're going to keep it simple. Mm -hmm. What is your message? Here are your five pillars. What are your messages? Make sure your content has that on there. And put it on there and just make it so that when someone looks for you, because they just got to know you, now let's get them to like you. And here's the thing. If they don't like you, that is perfect because they're not your client. This is it too. We, I think, especially as girls, you know, you want to make sure that you're liked to be kind. People won't like you. I got to be liked. If someone doesn't like me, something is wrong with me. That's something that's wrong with me, right? And oh my goodness, uh, you can do everything right. People are still not going to like you and you just have to learn to be okay with that. It has nothing to do with you. Mm -hmm. Imagine being a model and working in Los Angeles. It's, I mean, talk about brutal. You have got to have, you know, some confidence behind you because every single day you're being told, no, you're, you're, you're too skinny. You're too fat. You're too ugly. Your skin, you know, your hair color is wrong. Your eyeballs are weird, whatever it is every single day. And you're mm -hmm. being judged solely on your outside appearance, not what's in your heart, not what's in your head, just on the outside. So imagine the mindset that that takes. So I love taking that into my coaching of if I can get you to understand that that does not matter what you have mm -hmm. inside of you, the message that you have for someone else, they need that from you. If you focus on that, it makes it really easy. Yeah, it definitely. And I, I love the perspective that you have where like everything does not have to be absolutely perfect. Like mm -hmm. get your message out there and that can come in so many different forms and so many different places. And we have so many different opportunities. So if you feel like you're being shoved into this box where you just do not fit, you get to be creative with it. You can put your 
yourself in places. You can be on all of the social media platforms. You can have your messages where some people might look for you on YouTube. Some people might look for you on TikTok or Instagram. If you are there and you are very clear about who you are, who you can help, you have some examples of what you do. All the other things don't have to be perfect. You don't have to dance to a dance you don't want to, to a trending audio and all of those little nuances that the world feels like makes us feel like we have to do them or else we're going to fail. And that is just, again, it's just not true. There are so many different opportunities to succeed. And I know we could talk about this for hours, Julie. I know we could go <laughs> on and on and on, but how can people find you to connect with you and potentially work with you? Absolutely. So I'm sure it'll be in the show notes. My name, my mother's Canadian. So she spells my name a bit different. It's Julie, J-U-L-E-E. -E. Um, so it's juliegracie.com. Uh, and on there, there's some free resources on there which I love, especially for women, because the biggest thing when they decide to move forward in their businesses is two, two big things. I don't have the time or I don't have the money. Right. So I go ahead and nip that in the bud. I made a, if you just, um, will message me there on my site, I have made resources. They are, I will email you the first three. You start with those. And then I'm going to email all 10 that I use in my life. And when you go through there, you can not not save time and money when you use these. And these are free tools. These are free ways to do things because you're going to need time and money to be able to focus because a lot of women, we will just keep stacking things on ourselves. And that's when we get overwhelmed and burnt out and we quit because mm -hmm. instead of removing some things and creating space, we just shove more in. So I tell women first, first step, focus on saving your time and your money because you're going to need it to really build your business, whatever it is you're doing, or grow your business. If you already have one, I have those free tools on my site, um, for anyone. And then from there, once they do that and they create that time, they create that. Um, I also offer a 90 day plan, and this is a great way for people to start out with. It keeps you focused. It's an, it, it goes through 90 days from now wherever you are in your business from here to 90 days and lay out a plan of what you want to accomplish. Again, I'm huge on writing things down <laughs> and then having that as your accountability sheet to go forward because life can be distracting and, Oh, I'll do it next week. I'll do it tomorrow becomes next year becomes two years. And this really shows accountability, right? And then from there, if they want to continue to coach with me, I have opportunities there. That's so incredible that you provide all of this. So do not miss out on this opportunity to get all this information from Julie. Click the link in the description below and definitely connect with her. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today. Thank you, Leslie. This is wonderful. I, I love the clientele you have here. I love the message that you have for these ladies and you know, just really to everyone out there, use the gifts you have inside. Do not hide them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. What if I told you there is a way to get more leads in your online business without having to post on social media? That's something you'd want to know more about, right? Well, you can learn exactly that in my free training where I will teach you how to leverage simple conversations to turn strangers into paying clients, as well as how to borrow other people's audiences to build your authority, credibility, and connect with new potential clients, as well as how to make sales simple and easy. Click the link in the description or go to Client Connection Method.